Okay, so in the previous video, we have discussed how to calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction. But there we got to know what is the product composition and what is the reactant composition. Reactant composition is anyways known to us because we are only reacting it. But the product composition we may not know, specifically at higher temperatures because dissociation of the products may occur. For example, say octane reacts with oxygen to give carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide may dissociate into carbon monoxide or carbon and or nascent oxygen. Water may dissociate into hydrogen and oxygen, which again may dissociate into nascent oxygen and uh, uh, nascent hydrogen, etc. So basically, we got multiple products but to balance the equation we have only like three atoms like carbon hydrogen oxygen so we have only three equations using atom balance but there are nine variables or maybe even more based on the uh, dissociation of the reactants also so how to do that is the next question for that we uh, we find the equilibrium approach now what is an equilibrium equilibrium means the state at which the both forward and backward re reactions happen at the same rate. This is called as the equilibrium of reaction. Now, okay, but at equilibrium, an important point to note is that all the reactants may not be converted into products. That is another important point. All this is your high school funder, basically. Again, just a revision. So what is the entropy change of the reaction? It is the delta Q by T for the reversible path. Delta Q is by T for reversible path is K times the enthalpy change of the reaction divided by time T. And we know that the entropy of the mixture chamber, the entropy of the mixture chamber is zero because the temperature, volume, composition, etc. do not change at equilibrium. So, finally, after doing the entropy change analysis, we get that we can say that we can define a constant called as an equilibrium constant Kp is Pm power mu into Pn power nu by Pa power alpha by Pp power alpha. Or the partial pressures raised to the stoichiometric coefficients of the products divided by the partial pressure raised to the stoichiometric coefficients of the reactants. And you know that partial pressures can be found from the total pressure by using Dalton's law. And also another important assumption we have used is, as I said in the starting, all, this, all the products and reactants, everything are in gaseous state. Cool. So after this, okay, we define it from equilibrium constant. Now, how is this related to this enthalpy change? See, basically after finding this, I can say that we can get three equations. The remaining, the remaining six equations we can get by say the dissociation of carbon dioxide to CO and O2 and then CO may again dissociate into carbon and oxygen or water may dissociate into H2 and O2 or hydrogen may dissociate into nascent hydrogen, oxygen may dissociate into nascent oxygen or H2O may even dissociate into H plus OH etc. What I would suggest is, for a better explanation or better practice of a problem, please refer to the Hill and Peterson page 51, example number 2. That's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to discuss about the boundary layer theory. Yeah, boundary layer theory and boundary layer equations. Thank you.